On today's show, Mercedes EQC hits Australia. I've got some news around how you can meet Malcolm Turnbull. And well, just something's wrong. Hang on a second. That's better. G'day, my name is Chris, and well, this is your show about everything happening in Australia and from sometimes around the world in the space of re renewable technologies, EVs, and more. If you're new, thanks for joining me, viewers, return subscriber, love it. And big shout out to my Patreons for supporting me. You can do so for as little as like $2 a, a month. Um, or if you like Ray and Angelo here, you can be at producer level and get your name on the show every time. All right, let's jump straight into the news because, well, got some exciting stuff. And the first one is that if you're in Sydney, on Tuesday the 10th of December. See if you can get down to the National Smart Energy Summit at the Hilton Hotel in Sydney. Yeah, I said that twice, but just to make sure that you know it. It's in Sydney. Hmm. Why here you ask? Well, because Malcolm Turnbull and Mike Cannon-Brooks, along with several other presenters, are gonna be talking about National Smart Energy. It's like a summit thing. Now, a full program is available down below, so check out who's gonna be there and what topics that might interest you, but it's definitely a, a unique opportunity to actually um, meet and hear what some of our industry leaders are saying in the space of renewable tech. Now, I spoke about this next story earlier this year, but there's been an important update to Australia's first mining project that not only uses like wind power, but also like a 23 megawatt solar array, a 30 megawatt battery, and diesel to provide like a microgrid capacity for this gold mine in WA. But the exciting part that I'm sharing with you today is the fact that they've just transported a massive wind turbine with each blade being 160 meters in length and it's made its remarkable journey from Port Hedland to this remote town in West Australia. So to the West Australian Northern gold fields, there's a total of like 630 plus kilometers for that journey, which is actually the longest journey that one of these massive blades has ever done in the world. So record setting, yeah, great job. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Mercedes-Benz EQC 400, which is gonna be available for test drives starting next week. Yeah, Monday the 9th of December. Now, Mercedes Australia is actually uh, telling me that this is gonna be available for uh, drives, uh, drives. This is gonna be available to purchase for our roads from mid 2020. And well, if you wanna actually go give it a try and get yourself uh, maybe into a luxury electric vehicle, well, you can do so starting next Monday. So please, do get along there. What do you suppose Maccas and the car company Ford have in common? Give up? Well. Turns out they're actually gonna be combining powers to use the coffee waste to make car parts. Yeah, you heard right, car parts. You see, what Maccas is doing is during its production of roasting coffee, the coffee skins actually come off and well, that material can actually be used for like headlight housings and well, interior underbody parts for their cars. And well, Ford claims that that will enable them to make car parts that are 20% lighter and use 25% less energy to create the same thing that they already do. This, this is brilliant because, well, let's face it, no matter what car company you love, at the end of the day, they're using materials and more plastics, they're petroleum. And so to substitute some of that product with this is a great reuse of resources. Time for my favorite segment, mail time. Okay, so this week, well, there's been a little bit of interesting comments there, and well, my video about the electric motorbike, um, the Super Soco TC Cafe Racer, uh, has gained a lot of attention, and well, I've reached out to the guys from Super Soco to actually hopefully get myself a loan unit for a longer period, so that I can, you know, improve upon what is basically a first impressions video. But some of the questions from that video include this. Jenny wrote, it is a Chinese company. One more product in the flood of Chinese products in Australia, manufactured in China, designed in EU? Well, yeah, potentially, but look, I have no troubles with things that are manufactured in China, because let's face it, iPhones are made there, Teslas are made there, so long as the quality is good. And well, with the Super Soco, they're actually using, I think, a mixture of um, LG, 
Panasonic and is it Mitsubishi batteries. I'll put it on screen now, I forget. But nonetheless, the, the battery tech is, well, you know, the sort of stuff that Tessa uses, uh, as well as, yeah, as a Bosch motor. So I don't mind the fact that this is actually an affordable electric motorbike because compared to the high-end uh, motorbikes that are uh, available from California, those things cost thirty to forty thousand dollars. And sure, they can go a lot faster and accelerate crazy, crazy fast like a superbike. But nonetheless, um, yeah, five thousand, forty thousand. There's a big gap there. David Thorpe writes. G'day Chris, I live in the Northern Territory and there's a couple of reasons why solar does not have a big uptake here. It's mainly a cost. A maximum size home system, 6.6 kilowatts, will on average set you back $14,000 after government rebates. You need to include cyclone coding, etc. and all of it adds up. And then there's the rental and defence housing, and believe me, there's a lot of them, and that will not allow solar installations on dwellings. Yes, I have solar on my roof and we're looking at purchasing an EV in the future. And no, Tesla Cybertruck snowplow. <laughs> yeah, uh, good one. So thanks for that comment, David. And uh, yeah, I asked that question because for a few weeks now, I've been seeing more and more news about the, you know, the Northern Territory Singapore link, the, uh, what's it called? The solar, whatever it's called. Uh, that's why that Mike Cannon Brooks is getting behind and it's a massive battery storage, massive solar array. And um, uh, the Northern Territory government is actually getting on the bandwagon and by 2030, they have promised to go to 50% renewables. So yeah, that's kind of like Victoria's target. And, um, but, they have a wealth of sun up there and that was my question in that video. So if you wanna check that out, look down below and yeah, check it out. All right, motorbike riders, listen up. This story is for you. Vancouver-based startup company, Demon Motorcycles, has put a bit of a teaser out there, which I actually missed back in April. Not very sure why, but anyway, check this out. Turns out they're not only gonna get into electric vehicle production, but also they're developing some, some serious tech that should improve the safety of motorbike riders and well, everyone around them to be honest. Called the Copilot system, it uses like a number of sensors including radar, multiple cameras, and well, some sensors and AI to track the speed and direction of up to 64 moving objects. The system uses like a patent pending system of haptic feedback um, and vibrations through the handlebars, as well as some LED warning lights. Now, the idea is here that they're actually gonna be alerting the rider to potential collision warnings. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be something that's really annoying and well, actually not wanted by motorbike riders because when you ride a motorbike, you have to be hyper vigilant, thinking that, well, that car over there might do this, so I need to be ready to do that in return. But nonetheless, this is something that could actually help reduce you know, injuries and more fatalities to motorbike riders. So that's well done. Demon Motors also with this motorbike that they're gonna be showing off at next year's 2020 CES, um, have built into it uh, like motorized forks so it changes the height and position of the bike in general, as well as the pegs that can change position if you're doing highway riding versus urban commuting, and also, uh, the shape and dynamics of the bike itself. So go check this out and well, uh, again, video links are down below. Okay, this might be a bit of a worrying trend. If you're a traditional car maker and where that, in Australia at least, for the 20th consecutive month, new vehicle sales have, well, fallen. How much so? Well, the Federal Chamber of Automotive Industries has detailed that year over year, is down by 9.8%. And well, it's a 20 and such fall for like, well, what, 20 and fall? So that's like almost two years. That's two years, that's, that's amazing. Like not good amazing, especially if you're a car dealership. But anywho, it's believed to either be due to difficult economic times, uh, maybe that people's disposable income is not as what it used to be, maybe, who knows. Um, but perhaps uh, it's uh, the learning practices of banks, but a thing that I think this is what's going on here is that, well, people are waiting for EVs to become affordable. I've got several friends who don't own EVs and myself including that number, and we're all waiting for something to happen in this car space in Australia so that we can actually buy EVs and we're all waiting for the prices to come down. 
Guy Parkinson from Driven goes into a lot more detail here and notes that Australians are buying more hybrid vehicles, but unfortunately, due to the lack of electric vehicle sales data, it's hard to know whether people are actually moving over to EVs or that, well, they're just, again, waiting for the right environment <coughs> incentives. Uh, but yeah, look, if you're interested to know a bit more about EV incentives, I did a very detailed analysis into this subject last week. So please go check that out. And yeah, it's um, let's get into our politicians to please do more, do better. Let's make our air a lot cleaner and get our CO2 emissions down. All right, that will do it for today's episode. Again, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Now, as of recording this video, I'm at 2,989 subscribers, which is like so close to 3,000. Now, I know there's actually some regular viewers out there who maybe are not subscribers, but you know what being a subscriber actually does? It actually helps companies sort of go, well, hey, who's doing, uh, who's got a big subscriber account in Australia and who can we reach out to, to you know, show off our product, um, get media loaner cars like Tesla and Nissan, you know, they actually have um, uh, offered up cars to me because, well, the, I get their views and I have more importantly subscribers. And um, so I really do appreciate it if you could join me with that. So yeah, like the video, put a comment down below, but importantly, subscribe. Let's get past 3,000 and next year, because it's getting close now, let's strive for 10,000, but little baby steps, right? Anyway, again, thanks to my awesome patrons for supporting me, and yeah, if you do nothing, be good and be green.